Oh, this is another really good one, and ho this will be less offensive. <laughs> Let's move on to a less offensive one, okay? Everyone's throwing their soap pumps at the TVs right now. <laughs> I know. Family comes over, the first thing they do is walk the entire house and check off all the, the metal. Absolutely, so, they're like, <gasps> And Edna's going to write you an email later. That lamp is not the shade I mean, of the door handle. <laughs> I mean, we don't even What is happening here? Even... I'm like, <laughs> So evil. <laughs> Can't wait to see the comments <laughs> on this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What'd you, what'd you put in this coffee? You didn't put anything good in that coffee! <laughs> Hello and welcome to the house of Valentina. I'm Valentina and my husband Jack and I, we are taking a little coffee break and chatting about design, which is kind of what we do, isn't it's it? It's what we do all the time. Yes, we just love to be able to sit and chat with you guys about, you know, crazy stuff like dated decorating rules that you should definitely not be following. This list is coming partially from you guys and decorating rules that you guys have told us You've asked us, told us, Valentina, this is a rule that I thought I had to follow. Valentina, I've stopped following this rule. I think it's stupid. And we've kind of made a little list from you guys. And we realized there were actually quite a few things. And part of this came from the other day because I was looking for clothing and I'm like, oh, it was, it's white pants. When am I allowed to wear those? And you're like, <laughs> honey, there are no more rules in that space. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, well, we think about that and it, we just... We don't think about the interior ones as much because we just, you know, we've gotten so used to breaking them. <laughs> but we thought it'd be really fun to share with you guys some of these dated decorating rules that you do not have to follow anymore. And if maybe you have been following them, maybe some tips and tricks on how to fix them in your home. You'll be surprised. I think most of these are going to be budget friendly fixes. Budget friendly and it's yeah. going to result in freedom. Yes. Fun. We love that. So, uh, yeah, don't forget to hit subscribe because we definitely have, we have like a list of some video ideas and we're like, we've got some fun stuff coming out. There's some really good stuff coming up. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so make sure you hit subscribe so we get to see you guys again. And also give the video a big thumbs up and let us know which of these rules you are totally guilty of obeying and which one you are like, I've been breaking that for years, woman. <laughs> Can't wait to hear. <laughs> All right. Let's jump in here. Cheers. Cheers. Got the iced one going iced there. Iced lavender latte. Wow. Is mine lavender too? No. I went old school. Rude. I know. You didn't bring me treats and you didn't give me lavender? Am I on a diet? No. I'm breaking the rules. <laughs> no, you're not. Oh my. No, I'm sleeping outside tonight. Mm hmm. And sadly for you, there's not even a dog house. So, ha. Nope. Oh, that's really good. I think that a lot more people realize that this is a rule that they don't have to follow anymore, but there's still a lot of people who are like, so I've heard that it's okay to not do this anymore, but I still feel like I'm not really sure. And that rule is that all the furniture has to match. Rooms to go, I think is the perfect example of this idea of matching rooms and you would buy the set and it's definitely not just them, but uh, it's definitely who we think about, don't you think? Well, I grew up watching Price is Right, and you watch it, and it's like, <laughs> and the grand prize is the seven-piece dining set. Yes. Every piece is exactly the same. Yeah. I think that's where a lot of that comes from, is that, so. that time period. Yeah, and it, maybe it was out of convenience. It's okay to have a matching set, but you might want to think about maybe just taking the pieces apart and putting them into different rooms and mixing and matching them. I do that all the oh, time. Yeah, all the time. I'll take a dining set, and I'll take the chairs out, maybe you put them with a different set. Sometimes we sell them if they're really uncomfortable, which is kind of the case a lot of times, mm -hmm. and put something really comfy. I did that in my mom's dining room. I put an upholstered chair with her dining table, and then we left her china cabinet and her table because she's obsessed with them and apparently spent a ton of money on them. But I also think that you could take the china cabinet out and use it for a library even. Yeah. You could use it in a bathroom. You, you can change those pieces out without necessarily having to spend a lot of money. I am so excited to take just a moment and thank our video sponsor for today, which is HelloFresh. I am so relieved when <laughs> it is a HelloFresh night, to be perfectly honest. I don't have to go grocery shopping. I don't have to do any meal planning. Everything comes to the door that I need in order to make these gorgeous, healthy meals for my family, and it's incredible. You can cater it to your own dietary needs. Choose if you want less or more, how often you get it. It really is such a help, and it really is just as delicious as we have told you so many times before. We have the salmon in creamy Dijon chive sauce. We also have roasted pepper, 
Cava Toppy Milano. Uh, wait, what? That looks amazing. <laughs> wow. And then Honey Miso Sweet Potato and Shroom Jumble. Yeah, I love that there's, the materials themselves are recyclable and that everything's portion size. You're not getting, you don't have a lot of food waste. Not, in my house, you don't have any food waste. We eat all of it and the portion sizing is perfect. We love it, but I just love that it's got recipes that I would never have even thought to have even tried and it's just a lot of fun. HelloFresh has very generously sent us a discount code. Go to hellofresh.com and use code VALENTINA16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. So I will have all the details down below in the show notes if you're looking for it as well. And um, yes, I'm gonna get started. I'm so excited, let's do this. Look at that. Is that not just absolutely gorgeous? How is it? I think it's really good. Is it good? Oh my gosh. It's delicious. And I have one more thing. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, oh, wow, 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 wow. I'm gonna add some little chives to this and make it all fancy and uh, apparently feed my children because they are very hungry. Yes, I am. And don't forget to check out the code down below so that you can test out HelloFresh yourselves because clearly we love it. <laughs> and now back to today's video. This is one that actually came from one of you guys. This is from Jennifer. She wrote me and was asking, do all of the arms of the sofas have to be the same shape? And I thought that was really interesting. I never thought about that. I think because we never, we, we were overseas for so long and they don't do that overseas in general. Yeah. So we didn't have the option of it. And so it didn't, I think a lot of this is just that we just, it didn't even occur to us. Yeah. So we never try to match all of the shapes ever um mm. would like we have the matching so sofas obviously that have the matching shape but then i think you can can and should mix the arms i think that you can definitely yeah. think about the height of your furniture i think it's really nice to have a general height of the room like you when we've tried to bring in some of our furniture that we've had that was traditional yeah it's, so, it's tall. so tall and it's so overwhelming it doesn't sit well with our low profile sofa so i think generally you want to have furniture that's about the same height same you know seat height those kinds of things are really helpful but i think other than that you can really mix and match the the arms you may not want to have i think sometimes you can blend different styles together but i think generally they need to feel like they they belong in the same home if that makes any sense yeah or if that doesn't, at least the color kind of matches. Like if you're gonna bring a cool chair in that does have a lot more shape to it, then maybe the fabric is closer to this color or something, maybe. Yeah, no, Or it's not like, right. whoa, where'd that come from? Yeah, you just don't want it to feel like it was just. <laughs> where'd that come from? Like, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it just feels like it, it feels like it goes together. And you get to be the judge of whether it feels right. There's, there's no one else judging you. It's all about what you like and what feels good to you. So yeah. definitely. Uh, if you can try to put your pieces together, if you're in the store, start looking at the heights of the furniture and the arms and the way they're mixing and matching them. And then that should, that should give you a good running start on this one for sure. It's like a trigger. <laughs> what is you. it going to be? <laughs> I'm like, you say it cause you're the one that's I can't, like, I can't read it. <laughs> themed rooms. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. You and your oars. All right, move. 1.8 million people have listened to you talking about throwing the oars out of yes. the themed rooms. Yes. In one of our videos we posted a few months ago, I'm like, oh my gosh, of all the videos. Of all the ones to hit almost 2 million, that one. Why did it have to be that one? It's a lot of oars. <laughs> There are There's four million oars. Or so many oars that have been burnt and uh, put in the trash <laughs> pile. I'm like, oh my gosh. Give me your oars. I'm pretty sure that's what I said. I think it is. That goes on the t-shirt. Yeah. I'll leave a link in case somehow you missed that video, even though I kind of wish that if you haven't seen it, just don't go watch it. No, please go watch just it. Just don't go it's watch hilarious. it. No, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I think themed rooms is an old dating, uh, not old dating. Themed rooms is an old dated way of decorating. And I think a lot of us thought that's what we were supposed to do. I know we definitely thought that's oh, yeah. what we were supposed to do. And it turns out that you don't have to have any kind of a theme. 
In fact, I think now it's like no theme, no theme. You don't need a theme at all. You don't need to be at the beach. You don't need to be at the mountains. You don't have, and we still, like our kids, we, ha we bring the essence of themes into yes. their room. Like Parker loves the beach. That's our 17 year old. And we have some, like a couple of little beach accessories and some artwork that has a beach theme. But I don't think if you looked at the room, you would think that's a beach theme. <laughs> no, because there's no words that say beach all over it. Right. Or and Landon has, he loves the mountains. So we took the color palette. You can watch the, actually the entire makeover. We went to the mountains, we got inspiration. We didn't come home and just literally try to- Build a mountain out of plaster and put his bed in it. We didn't do that. Yeah, yeah. So I think there's a way of bringing themes, themes into your spaces without being really obvious about it. So I think in a way we still do that idea where it does have some sort of, it needs to feel like- I would call it inspiration. Yeah. Like it's inspired by the beach. Yeah, I think but it's about- it's not like literal, you know, I'm walking in sand. Yeah, because I, I feel like that's how we used to do things. We had the oars, we had the anchors. Fishing and pole holding we were, the curtains yeah, up. Yeah, like we were on the hunt for that stuff. Like we worked hard to create that theme. And we, I was proud of what I had made. I did a garden room for Haley. That's how Pinterest came alive. Pinterest was like, yes, garden yeah. themed room. Like whatever you wanted, it was big. Yeah, for Haley when she was three, she had a garden theme. And, oh, she did, and, it was so cute. <laughs> oh, it was cute, wasn't it? <laughs> she had a picket fence on the wall. She had little buckets hanging with little faux that flowers was so much in them. Fun. Yeah, I mean, we had a lot of fun creating the themed room, but we don't do it that way so much anymore. We just- No. I mean, I have a garden and themed room, but with pink walls, but- mm -hmm. We keep him in the basement for that reason. No one gets to see that. <laughs> oh, oh, I feel like this is one that, it's definitely a dated one, but I feel a little bit guilty because I feel like, and so many people have fun with this one. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say it and then you can choose whether you wanna take it or leave it. But one of the things that I think is a very dated idea about decorating is that you need to have themed decor for every single season. And I think that really limits you. And we've talked about this before on some other videos about how you don't have to decorate for every season. In fact, we even have the seasonal decorating series that were coming out month by month that we're sharing with you how we are decorating in our home for every month and for every season but you're not going to see like easter bunnies did not come in for for easter season if your mom is watching this just go ahead and turn it off i know she's not going to like it please and, just and I, get and back. I, I actually really worry about this stuff like when i've said it i i get upset because i don't want to hurt somebody's feelings or to take away the joy that you feel when you're decorating because to me what you love is the most important thing of yeah. all and because it's your home. Yeah. So if you love the little bunnies and you love the chicks and you love pulling out your seashells for the summer and you just love that, I, I just wouldn't take that away from you. But I think that in a way it's, there's freedom in not feeling like you have, have to, to have yeah. those things because we talk about that month by month. It's like the, the florals in our house change. We might oh, change yeah. out which books are laying out and you can make what you have go a lot further. And you use the same exact face instead of switching it out for a summer themed one. Uh, and we change use... some of the smells. Like we'll go from like dark woodsy in the winter to like yep. lighter and, and same thing with the, we have throws everywhere because this one is cold. Yeah. Pretty much year round. Yep. And but she'll go with lighter and more, at least lighter colors and yeah. stuff to where it doesn't feel Christmassy all year round. It also doesn't yeah. feel like summer when the tree is up. So Right. So yeah, we definitely we definitely decorate for the seasons. It's something that I just absolutely love. I love the way that the home just lives and breathes with the seasons. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of pressure that goes along with the seasonal themed decor and you have to store all of it. So I'd rather have, you know, like one base and I just switch out the greenery yeah. based off of the season. I have a little stash of uh, blankets and I'm one might be in the basket and then something else might be on the sofa, but I have like a curated amount of items and I'm able to switch them out per season and give myself and us a, a whole new look. And yeah. I think that that can actually be a lot more financially beneficial and yeah, definitely. Just easier, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, this is another really good one, and this one will be less offensive. <laughs> Let's 
move on to a less offensive one, okay? Everyone's throwing their soap pumps at their TVs right now. <laughs> I know. Like all the thrift stores are going to be full of like themed decor suddenly. I'm like, oh, I have so much guilt. <laughs> uh, this one's way easier and I think it will be very liberating. And that is that the people thought, and maybe this was a rule that everybody followed before. And some people still follow this like religiously. And that is that all the metals have to match not only in the room, but throughout the entire house. And I kind of feel bad because it's really hard to make your faucet, your door pulls, your lamps, your overhead lights, your door handle, like to try to get every single metal in your entire house to be the exact same color. Some people get like- I know. They exhaust themselves. Trying to make that happen. Trying to make it all match perfectly. Yeah. And I think that it can be a little bit odd if you've got like, sometimes if it's a really shiny brass and it's got a really yellow undertone to it, and then you've got it maybe sitting next to a champagne brass and they just, they don't seem to, they just don't look like they really go well together. That yeah. maybe could be a little bit odd. In most cases, it's probably gonna be just fine, <laughs> I mean, right. to be perfectly honest. But I think that you, even the other day, I was talking to a client and they didn't know that you could have like the brushed bronze door handles and then like matte black uh, knobs on the, on the cabinets. Wow. It's like, oh no, no, you, you can I mean, mix. we all know that when family comes over, the first thing they do is walk the entire house and check off all the, the metal. Absolutely. So They're like, oh, that, and Edna's going to write you an email later. That lamp is not the shade I mean, of the door handle. I mean, we don't <laughs> what even, is happening here? We don't even talk to our family for the first 30 minutes because they're making their checklist, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so all those door handles didn't match the Where door are those pools? bunny soap pumps? Oh. Week till Easter, guys. No See bunnies. what's happening here. <laughs> You don't have to take it so no. literal and so serious. It breaks my heart when people feel so much anxiety around the pressure it. pressure around that. Yeah, because it really robs you of the joy of decorating your home. Oh, I'm just gonna take my sip of coffee and then I, I'll say it and then I'll take my sip of coffee and you can just go ahead and make fun of me. Okay, okay so there is a misconception, this old decorating rule that all of your art needs to be hung at eye level, which would generally be around five foot three. <laughs> there you go. Wow. So for those of us that don't even reach that high, even with you have to look our up at it. heels. A like pretty piece of art. <laughs> I'm actually really self-conscious about this because I worry that I will decorate like a short girl <laughs> because I'm only five foot one and I never hang things at my eye level ever. That rule is one that I had heard and I was like, yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> and then what happens is the more that we've done this, especially for other people. And like, if you have a room like this, that's two story and it's got these humongous ceiling heights, it would be very odd to hang the art in the room. At, even at five foot three, it would be very odd for it to be centered there because you've just got such an expanse yeah. of height. So I think that that's an old decorating rule that could actually cause a lot of anxiety because it's like, oh, what do I do if now I'm gonna have all this empty space? It, going super, super high just because you're trying to bring the eye up, it, that doesn't look necessarily like it belongs there either. But definitely think through, check out Pinterest. We say that all the time. Our Pinterest account is packed, packed with ideas so that you can, a lot of times the pictures that we're showing on the video and every, everything's always linked and yeah. over on our Pinterest account so that you can see what we're talking about, that you can vary the height of your artwork and it doesn't have to be at five foot three. It's, oh man, I, I write this one as often as possible. That This is a misconception that it's, an old decorating rule. It's kind of like wearing white after Labor Day. We wear white year round nowadays, right? Amen, sister. We paint all rooms dark. <laughs> Give it to me. The smaller the room, the darker the color. <laughs> dark and feisty. <laughs> I love dark, small rooms. I think the smaller the room, the better it looks when it is dark because it's cozy and I see that question I saw that question literally as we were getting ready to film someone asked today I have a small cabin can I paint it dark I don't think I'm allowed to what 
By who? By who? Yes, it's your house, first of all. You can do whatever you want. You can take every one of these rules and obey them or just shove them off. Sure whatever you want to do. Sure, still sell you the paint. They don't care the size. <laughs> yeah. So go do it. You you I are love it. You're the owner of this. Yeah, like. I love when you have a, a small room to make it dark. I just think it's sensual. I think it's... It's intimate. Intimate and cozy. It closes in the room and it feels so close and intimate. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I, I love it. And I, yeah, I mean, I don't, actually, I'm like, the laundry room, if you watched our, we did a recent tour and I showed you the laundry room, it was the pink color video. Yeah, yeah. I showed the laundry room and the powder room, and those are the smallest rooms in the house and those are the darkest rooms. And yeah. I just love it. So you can fill in with lighting. You can do all those things to where you don't feel like you can't see, like you're in there shaving and you cut your nose you off. You wouldn't be able to see if it was light either. If there's no light. Yeah, but just add some lighting, yeah. add some stuff like that. You have that. to have light either way. So yeah, yeah no. Have fun with Go it. Go dark. You will love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, <"Wah." laughs> it's so evil. <laughs> can't wait to see the comments <laughs> on this one. <laughs> <laughs> What you what you put in this coffee? You didn't put anything good in that coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even give me lavender syrup. This is just me <laughs> off the chain. Jack Daniels in there or something? There is not. <laughs> <laughs> I just get feisty, okay? It's just because I love this stuff, and I, I think know. it's so important because this is your home. I don't want people to feel like I'm not allowed to do that. Yeah, it just makes me sad. I'm like, yeah, you whatever, are. Whatever you can do, whatever you want. It's your house, your rules. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so let's wrap up with today one of the ones that I think is also just a massive misconception is that, and that is that the ceiling has to be white. Your ceiling is your fifth wall and you get to have a lot of fun with the ceiling. And it's not a new concept, by the way. Look oh, at no, old churches no. in Europe. They have gorgeous painting on the roof. There's yeah, all these fun absolutely. things. So, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely did not admit that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do have that mural of me naked on the cloud up on the ceiling, but that's the only one that we've kind of copied. I'm gonna need some more coffee. We're gonna keep going down this road. <laughs> did you picture that too? I did. Yeah, it was not cute. <laughs> Different than reality, but still. <laughs> did you paint yourself in a better light? <laughs> My head, the rock's body. Well, I can't argue with that. <laughs> Maybe I would want to look at that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on that fine note. Yes. On that actual fine on note. On that actual fine note. <laughs> uh, we are going to finish sipping our coffee. We do need to get back to work. Got lots of fun projects we're working on. So please hit subscribe so you don't miss out. And uh, let us know which of these you are laughing your head off about. And which of these you're super excited about breaking in your house and which one you've been breaking forever. And you're just like, mm-hmm. So let us know down in the comments. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. I think that's about it. And if you want one of those murals, we do send those out and they are installable. Yeah. Jack. <laughs> we'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I got the most interesting email yesterday. I forgot, totally forgot to tell you about it. Goodwill wrote and said, thank you for the content you've been producing because they've seen a significant uptick in the number of giveaways, people donating stuff at their stores and they've traced it back to you. What? And now she's a huge fan. What? Yeah, and she said, and if you guys would be interested, we'd like to personally invite you to come like shop one of our stores and film in it. <gasps> that would be so much fun. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys would love that, wouldn't you? <gasps> Should we say yes to that? Let us know down in the comments. Oh my gosh. I know, I'm blown away. Goodwill, in case you are not in the US, is our thrift store. It's one of the big chains that we have here. And uh, I'm pretty sure that they saw an uptick from our own donations. <laughs> <laughs> it could be the 26 carloads that took over the other day, but still. When they're like, please go home. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just donate this to somewhere else. <laughs> and the guy's like, I can't do anymore. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> you people. <laughs> Why are all these candles coming in here? I've got a habit, I've got a problem, sorry. <laughs> wow, that's fun. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys let us know if that's another video idea that you would like to see. And I think we might say yes to that. I would. It'd be fun. It would be a lot of fun. That's cool. That's cool. All, all right. right. Well, uh, <laughs> all right, I an write. uptick in local <laughs> donations. <laughs>